All right. Okay. So uh, I know we, we kind of had a lot in between when Matt had just said this, but it's not supposed to be uh, super informative uh, or in the sense that you can't, you know, chime in, ask questions, be interactive. Uh, I'll ask questions and it makes it a hundred times better when, you know, I don't ask questions to crickets and they're silent. So uh, respond, make it, make it an enjoyable conversation. And hopefully you guys can walk away and learn something too. Obviously the uh, main topic for tonight is going to be like training principles and everything that kind of falls into constructing and building a workout and what we need to do to make your workouts as effective as possible. Um, and so kind of as we break that down, um, before we get too far into the workout side of things, um, I think the most important thing to touch on first is actually uh, our warmups. Um, and the reason I bring this up is uh, there's a number of you. I think I saw Willie in here. He's one of them. Uh, I'm putting him on blast a little bit, but uh, that when we had started working, we're doing like zero warm up, right? They, we would work on, they, we, I'd prescribe some kind of workout for them. Um, and usually either being super sore or um, having a hard time like getting going at the start of the workout. And a lot of that can be contributed to your warm up. So I guess with who's in here, be honest, but uh, who warms up and who just jumps right into their workout? Do you guys hit a warm up? Let's hear it. I warm up for my runs. For your runs? <laughs> what about your lifts? Uh, I run to the gym, but not not really. No, I just go across the street. So no. Yeah, yeah. I'm just asking. Maybe I'll <laughs> change. Maybe I'll change that down the road. Lay. What about you? You warming up? I do. I I, I need to. Yeah. So, yeah, I warm up. Good. I always warm up. Do you? All right. Good. Coachy's on you then. Trent, how about you? Minutes. You just started getting back into it lately. You've been warming up? Uh, yeah, I do. Uh, actually, okay, yeah. I have to. Yeah. At 50, you have no choice. <laughs> You're making me look forward to that. Uh, e, were you saying something earlier? No, that was me. I, uh, Angelo, it's, I do oh. a 12-minute stretch. 12 minutes? every workout. Yep, before every workout and every run. Yeah, so that's actually a good question. Uh or I guess uh, uh, something I want to ask is, do you do the same thing? Is that why it's 12 minutes? Pretty much, yes. Okay. I, cool. I change it up. I do change it up from time to time, but pretty much it's the same warm up. Yeah, that's uh, that's actually why uh, I was I was asking that. I'll touch on it here in a little bit, but uh, yeah, obviously, um, it's not a, a stupid question to think. You know, like, do I really need to warm up? And sometimes I get it, we're in a rush or whatever, but I promise you a warm up is going to make everything else that much more effective, even if it's if it's short and condensed. Um, and hopefully in the next couple slides, you can kind of have a better idea of what you can be doing to kind of prime your body for a workout. Um, well, let's see if my, there we go. So obviously the purpose of a warm up, there's a lot of, there's a lot of things that go into this and hopefully some of them you guys haven't thought about. Um, First is actually that uh, synovial fluid, it's a body in your, uh, it runs through all your joints. It's what actually lubricates your joints. Um, and so warm ups help prime that fluid into your joints, um, takes away a lot of your joint pain. It's also why, like, sometimes when you guys uh, start working out or people start working out um, after, you know, a week or two weeks, you talk about how much less your knees hurt and how much less your back hurts. And that's typically because it's your body's response to working out. Um, it's supplying more of this fluid to your joints at all times of the day. Um, so it, that's why working out is so much better for helping with those stiff and achy joints and things like that. Um, secondly, uh, it increases blood flow to all your muscles so that they are ready to actively be engaged uh, in an in exercise. It increases your um, internal core temperature. Um, and when your core temperature rises, um, your muscles fire harder and you will get a more effective workout. Um, your cardiovascular system and your nervous system um, are prepared in your warm up. So, again, if you've ever heard of, um, have you guys ever heard of like a second wind? Uh, like runners use it a lot. Angela, have you heard of it? Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. Once everything's going, it's when the energy, I mean, I've often like run a 5k and then 10 minutes later, I'm ready to run again. 
Yeah. See, so in like sprinters do it. I mean, it, it's really common with runners, but what we talk about with a second wind is like you should, uh, and wrestlers do it too, I guess, but, um, it's actually something where they talk about, you should basically get your heart rate as high as it's going to be in your actual competition and then bring it all the way back down and recover. And what that does is it helps basically clear out your, your, um, your lungs and, uh, your cardiovascular system, your heart. So all your blood is moving the way it should be, uh, basically primes everything for your workout. Um, and same with your nervous system. Um, your nervous system plays a large role in like cramping and lifting heavier weight and stuff like that. So again, it's just preparation for that. And then obviously it's mental. Um, oftentimes we don't want to work out. Uh, so you get there and you're like, damn, I really don't want to be here right now. I'm not feeling it. But oftentimes, I know Matt has said this on a lot of live trainings, but if you get there and you start warming up, oftentimes your whole attitude changes. I would argue the opposite that if you don't warm up, oftentimes you go through the workout and you feel like it wasn't a great workout. Um, and lastly, the most obvious, I think, is injury prevention. We all know um, that's kind of the core behind why we've been told to warm up, whether it's sports or whatever. Um, but obviously those are just a small multitude of the things that um, warming up can do for us. Um, with that, uh, you should never work out without priming your body or getting your body ready. And then hopefully through these next couple of slides, you're going to realize that as well. And a warm up is precisely that. It's what primes your body to move um, and exercise. <clears throat> and I'm going to kind of talk to you guys about what that can look like for, for different situations and scenarios. Um, but first, let's talk about uh, building a warm up. So, um, <clears throat> with that, okay, a warm up should effectively include uh, movement prep. So, what that means is it, you should mimic what you are planning on doing for that exercise, right? If you are going to be running, I would include some running in your warm up. If you are going to be squatting today, right? I would make sure you're doing some body weight squats, something that's going to bend your knees, right? Similar to a squat. If you have a bench press, maybe you're hitting some push ups and some shoulder rolls, right? Some stuff like that. But you should be mimicking the movement that you are going to be hitting in that workout. Um, so that again, we have, we're moving some of that fluid into the joints and everything else, getting blood flow there. Another part of building an effective warm up is going to be um, getting your heart rate elevated. And that, that comes back to that second wind principle that we're talking about. Um, if we can get your heart rate elevated, it's going to get blood to all your extremities um, and out of your organs and things um, and help prepare your muscles to get moving. It's kind of your wake up call per se. And again, circling back to what Matt said in the past, but if once you get that warm up in, you can tell if you've had an effective warm up by the attitude going in by your attitude now going into your workout. Um, and really the, the last thing to building an effective warm up to keep this in, in layman's terms or simple is adding some dynamic stretching. So oftentimes, most of our life, we've been told like, I should do some static stretching, where is, which is where you're just holding a position, right? Whether it's arm across your chest, you're um, sitting in a Z stretch or, you know, reaching down, touching your toes. But <clears throat> there's actually a lot more benefit to a dynamic stretch, which is where you're actually um, going through a movement or emotion. So I'll talk more about that here in the next slide, but it's actually the opposite of a stationary hold, right? If you guys have ever done like the Frankenstein kicks where you go opposite hand, opposite toe, um, rolling your shoulders or your arms in a big circle, that's a dynamic stretch, right? There's nothing stationary about that. I'm moving my joint uh, in that circular motion. So those three things are going to help you those, those should be three concepts you're constantly thinking about when you are warming up for your, your workout. Um, and really, a warm up can be effective in as little as five minutes. Like, you don't, it doesn't need to be that you spend 20 minutes getting warm um, just to go on a run, right? Are there times where warming up for 15, 20 minutes is maybe effective? Sure. If you're going to be trying to hit a PR in a squat or something, maybe you need to do that. But um, a, a good warm up can be done in, in honestly five minutes um, if you can do the accomplish these three things. So, with that, uh, this is literally typed out in my phone. You can see this. This is my notes on my iPhone. This is my warm up. It looks really long, but I mean, it takes me five seconds to do these toe touch squats. 
um, in, in each one of these exercises. So really this part of my warm up, um, it is, I do the same thing every single time and then I build off of it. So these, you know, 15, 20 things that you see right here uh, are something that I do every single time I go in. And this is for resistance training. If I were gonna go on a run, I would do something completely different. But if you notice, um, I'm basically, I have squatting in there. I have stuff for my shoulders. I have push ups. I have stuff for my hips, like a glute bridge and a hip flexor stretch. Um, and then that's all my movement prep. All of that honestly takes me maybe three or four minutes to get through. Um, it's quick. I just go one right to the next. As soon as I've done five toe touch squats, I go five deep squats and I kind of work the way, my way through. And honestly, because of how little cardio I do right now, that elevates my heart rate quite a bit anyways. Me and Matt were just talking about that. But uh, then I still do some heart rate elevation work and something that's really, really good for you. If you've never heard of this, I feel like it's starting to come to fruition, I guess, on social medias and stuff is, is walking backwards um, as opposed to forward. And this is more for a warm up. And they talk about it for like rehabbing or prehab uh, to strengthen your knees your knees and your ankles. So they oftentimes nonstop yeah. for physical What's therapy. Up? They have me do that nonstop for physical therapy. Yeah. See, it's like literally probably by the end of physical therapy, I actually just recently got done. I'm still doing it on my own, but, uh, I, uh, by the end of it, I was doing like a uh, half a mile to three quarters, like backwards. Yeah. I didn't yeah, resist see? stuff. It sucks. What, will you tell everybody, what was your surgery on your ACL and meniscus? Uh, no. So I had a, uh, it was a remission surgery. So it was my second okay. for this, thing, but it was a meniscus, meniscus tear on the lateral side. Yeah. Compared there. It slingshotted across the other side of my knee. It was epic. Oh, nice. Yeah. So, yeah. So obviously Reese has been going through physical therapy for that surgery. And I mean, thankfully he just backed me up on that, but, um, walking backwards on a treadmill, I do that as part of my heart rate, um, warm up part of my warm up. And also just for prehab, I know it's really good for my knees and your ankle mobility. Um, like things with squatting, oftentimes when people struggle to squat really low, it's uh, it's not it's less to do with their knees and more to do with their mobility and their ankles. They're um, they're not able to push their. E, did you say something? Yeah. So another good one for when you want to get ready for squat is roll your foot out on a lacrosse ball. I tell a lot of my clients to do that. And then I sit in a duck squat and push my knees out to the side with my elbows. Yep. I do that one and all the I'll time. Do, I'll do skip jumps for 30 seconds. It lo loosens everything up. Yep. Yeah. And obviously like what I'm showing here, I mean, if you guys ever want this, like I'll send it to you guys. If uh, you can ask your coach, I'll, I'll give it, I'll send it over. Um, but really um it can be a multitude of things this is just what i do and i'll tell you one thing is as you see here uh every warm up um i do this before every single lift and your body we've talked about it on a lot of these live trainings but it likes consistency and it likes rhythm right so it's why we talk about trying to go to bed around the same time every night why you try and wake up around the same time every day why if you work out around the same time every day, your body will respond better. Same thing with your warm up. If you can warm up um, and do a similar warm up, as long as you're doing similar exercises and you can follow a similar warm up like this, um, it will help signal and cue to your body that it knows it's going into uh, a lifting session, a run, whatever the case may be. So it will, your body will naturally take care of a lot of things if you can just be consistent and regular with what you're doing. Um, and then the last part is obviously uh, I do a little bit of dynamic stretching. It's primarily for my lower body. I have some shoulder rolls in there, but then Frankenstein's penny pickers, if you don't know what those are, they're basically single leg RDLs, um, a heel to heel to butt quad stretch and some uh, heel to hip walks. Um, you can do stuff like Eric talked about. They do a skips and a lot of different stuff there, but anything that's going to get you moving, get your heart rate up uh, and also move whatever joint it is that you're going to be working out. Um, with this, like I said, I build I build my warm up off of this. It always starts here, but if I'm squatting for that day, right, uh, I will build up. I will I'll do this entire warm up, and then if I'm loading up a barbell to do a squat, I will still slowly add weight to the barbell, hit a couple reps, add a little bit more weight until I'm to my working sets. Again, that's just to prime your nervous system and everything else. So if you guys are doing heavy lifting or anything like that, it can be super effective. Um, but now that we've kind of covered warm-ups, with that, 
uh, let's talk a little bit about workouts and how they are going to play a large role in all this, how this warm up leads to our workout and how we can make this effective as well. Um, obviously, if you guys have been working with the program for very long, you have a, a large variety of workouts you've done, you're doing, your coach has set stuff up for you. Um, ultimately, I say this, I say this, uh, oh, someone's joining here, just a second. Uh, ultimately, you need to do something that you enjoy. If, if, if this program is meant, it's meant to be lifelong, and if you want it to be lifelong, you need to do things that you enjoy. So if you don't want to go squat super heavy and lift under a barbell and all that intimidates you, but you like running, okay, let's make that work. I, I put it down here. If you're a runner like Angelo, I, I know he already lifts, but I was going to say, I would still challenge you and encourage you to do, even if it's some body weight strength training, right? Just because again, you want to move all your muscles. Um, so that's just something to take into consideration. But with that being said, as we kind of dive in this rabbit hole of the variety of workouts and things that we can be doing. Um, just know not, I mean, not all workouts are going to be fun. And if you think like Eric or Matt, do you guys want to work out every day? Are you guys motivated to work out every single day? Matt? Eric might be because he loves that shit, but, uh, yeah. there's a good two or three days a week where I'm like, I don't feel like doing this and I do it, but, uh, yeah. So if any of you guys are struggling with that, just know like that never goes away. Um, some people just love it and that's great for them. But most yeah. people, it's just about showing up every day at the same time every day, you know, structuring that routine and making sure that you can lay your head down at night and go, I do. Yeah, well. I like it every day. Huh? Hey. I like missing a day. My, re my rest day is a day I don't lift. I just I walk. So yeah. I'm on a rest day right now. But I don't like to not do something. Hey, Matt, what did the gym you say? 80% of your success is just showing up? Yeah, that was our gym yeah. motto. 80% of success is just showing up. And it was so true. And that's why I chose that as a model. Because it's like, especially at the gym, it's like, just walk through the doors. Like, once you walk through the doors, you're going to see other people doing their thing. And that's going to, you're not just going to sit around and watch people do their thing. So it's really about just showing up and yeah. being there. It's, it's why like just getting there makes a huge difference. It's actually what I found the hardest about working out at home sometimes is that you don't have to get there. Like you're already there. So it's like getting started is hard and going to the gym when you, the second you get in the car and you're on your way there, you've made your mind that you're doing it, you know? So it's just getting there, but yeah, they're never always going to be fun. Um, but you need to find something that you think is doable as far as I could do this day in and day out. You know, I could do this three times a week. You may not love it, but find something. And if you're not happy with what you're doing right now, talk to your coaches. Like, seriously, sometimes we don't know that you guys aren't like that. You despise your workouts basically. Right. And so we can work with that. We just need to know that like, Hey, this isn't it. Like, I don't like whatever it is about this workout. Let us change that for you. Right. But you guys got to vocalize that with us too. Um, another thing is, uh, that I found super effective with workouts is setting training goals for yourself. And Can I pop in on this real quick yeah. before you move on? So going back to what he was saying about trying different things and asking your coach. So when I had a gym, I had a gym. It was a, it was a boot camp style gym. And don't get me wrong. I love the boot camp. So I started out my fitness journey as like, you know, just traditional bodybuilding, lifting. Because really back then, that's really all there was. Like now it's like you have everything, like anything that you want to do as far as fitness and being active, like you have that. So we live in the best day and age for that, where back, not even that long ago, 15, you know, 20 years ago, it was like you had lifting and that was really it and running, right? Um, but I started getting tired of doing boot camps after a while because I was like, man, I need something new. Like, this, it stopped being it for me. And I actually started going to a CrossFit gym in my small little city of Lincoln, Nebraska, where everybody knows everybody. And hey, Matt Priest, the gym owner of this other gym is coming to this gym now, right? And it was, I was just talking to the coaches about this. It was so I could acquire new skills and I could do something to raise myself up, right? Um, and that's okay. Like, try different stuff, guys. Some people love kickboxing. Some people love boot camp. Some people love CrossFit. Some people love just bodybuilding. Like, find the thing that you're going to show up to every day, not dread um and have fun with right because 
And and going back to what he said about just pick, like, even if it's just twice a week, like something that you know you can do. Like in my Facebook group, I know I need to go live every week, right? Some people that I know that are my peers go live in their groups like two, three, four times a week. And I honestly just don't want to do that. I'm like, I'll run out of stuff to talk about. Like, you know, sometimes it's hard doing it just once a week, but I make myself do it once a week, right? And that's it. And I know I can do that once a week. Maybe it'll go up in the future, but once a week, I know it's going get to get me the result that I want that I'm looking for. So for you guys, two to three times a week is going to get you the result that you're looking for as long as the nutrition is obviously there as well. So, Yep. Um, and kind of where I'd left off there is, you know, the, another really important piece of your workouts that's going to make them effective uh, and give you something tangible to achieve other than a weight number or something that you're working for outside of the gym is setting training goals for yourself. Um, and oftentimes when I ask people this question, uh, they have no idea, right? Like they're in there just to kind of go through the motions and break a sweat, but it can be some, it's not something that you have to do, but it can be something that's really effective for making your gym, uh, making your time working out higher quality because you have something again, that you're kind of striving for there along with your nutrition and everything else, um, that you're working with your coaches for. So, I mean, that could be, if, your Angelo, look at, look at how much he runs. You guys see him post in the, the groups. I'm sure he has times that he's trying to hit. Actually, he has a certain time I think you're trying to hit for your marathon, right? Yes, sir. I'm trying to get in under five hours. Yeah, see, exactly. So um, it could be trying to run a faster time. It could be that, you know, you do, you know, if, if you're doing something from trainers, maybe you have the same workout, you know, uh, every other or every week, like you have a couple of the same workouts that overlap. It could be trying to finish it faster than you did the week before. It could be if you are lifting a certain weight, it could be, you know, I want to, by the end of this program, I want to be able to goblet squat a hundred pounds. Like it just finding something that is measurable for you to try and aim for that's going to still challenge you outside of just this weight number or this body composition that you're trying to change um, and if you can set that for yourself and it be meaningful I think you guys will also realize that your time working out um, is more effective in, uh, in that regard too so I don't know I accidentally clicked forward ahead but um, I want to talk a little bit about just a variety of uh, kind of the most common exercises or workouts that we that we typically are uh, that come across right and the first one is hit training we hear a lot about that it's super effective um, and really I think it gets this rap of like it, it has to be crazy um, crazy intense you got to do a lot of different exercises and stuff like that but that's not really how it developed it was primarily on um, this interval interval training um, it causes, it does a lot of things for you. Um, one of them, I'll talk about it here. Um, let me pop up a couple of these. The, the one, main one is this heart rate variability, right? So it doing these intervals, um, and, and I feel like HIIT training is kind of shape or, you know, uh, went away from these large intervals where you actually, your heart rate recovers a little bit. And sometimes people are calling a HIIT workout something that's just 20 minutes long. But a HIIT workout is actually something where your heart rate is going to spike up and it's going to recover a little bit and it's going to spike up again. Um, and that's those intervals that we're talking about. And there's a lot of effectiveness in that um, by giving yourself those short bursts or those short bursts of rest. Um, it allows for some, some muscle recovery. So it, it's not catabolic. It doesn't break down your muscle mass. Like, for instance, like just running would do if you went nonstop the whole time. Um, it is short and intense, so it can fit very well with like a very busy schedule. And that's where a lot of the appeal for HIIT workouts comes is that you can do it, you know, you can do something in 10, 15 minutes. Uh, this epoch that I talk about, this exercise or excess post-exercise oxygen consumption, all that is, it's a fancy word with, with these intervals. Um, what happens is your demand for oxygen is so high because these large spikes in your heart rate um, that your body continues to burn a lot more calories even after your workout is done, right? If you do something where your heart rate stays about the same the whole way, I'll use, you know, cycling, for instance, 
um, when you finish that workout, you know, your body goes right back to burning the same amount of calories it would if you were at rest. But with something like HIIT training, um, when you finish and you are that like completely wiped feeling like, uh, you know, like same feeling you get if you were just to go sprint all out 100 meters, um, that feeling is actually this epoch that we talk about. And it's just your body burning a lot of, uh, in, in its recovery process, it continues to burn a lot more extra calories. Um, some of the other benefits of this hit, like I said, it's typically very short um, and there's lots of variety. I mean, you can do it with dumbbells, kettlebells, body weight. You could add a barbell in there, do cleans. I mean, you can basically build anything into a hit workout. So again, um, if, if you're struggling with time, that's the first thing I would go to. Uh, and I would talk to your coaches about, you know, setting something up that kind of resembles this, this hit training. And like I said, it still provides um, the opportunity for muscle growth where something that's long and steady state necessarily doesn't. Okay. Another one, strength training. Um, I know like, gosh, it was probably like eight months ago. I gave a talk all about the, the benefits of strength training versus cardio and how they both play into this. So there's a little overlap there. Um, and if you weren't there for that and that interests you, ask your coach, we have all that stuff, but strength training, some of the benefits there is, um, there's, it's easy to track progressive overload, which just means it's easy to continually make it harder, right? You can add five more pounds to the weight that you did the week before. You can um, do more reps. You can take less rest time in between your sets. There's lots of ways to make the workout harder without having to change a bunch about what you're doing um, or add different exercises. Um, it's, it's optimal for making strength gains. Obviously, it's, it's your most effective way to truly put on lots of muscle mass and see lots of results with uh, that, you know, come with body composition specifically. Um, when you are losing weight and you're restricting your diet, right. And, and the fact that you're cutting calories back a lot, um, strength training should definitely be in the core of what you're doing primarily just because it's going to help your body prevent losing any muscle mass. So it's going to speed up the rate at which your body breaks down fat instead. Um, it's just a signaling process where your body is like trying to hold on to all the muscle that it has because you're still working out. Um, another thing, low there, there's not as much, you're not going to burn as many calories with strength training as you are like hit workouts or cardio. So you have to take that into consideration as well. So sometimes calories might get dropped a little bit harder and you, you know, you're going to need a, a variety of weight options, whether that is kettlebells, um, dumbbells, barbells to make that, to make it successful, just because you are going to need to constantly make that workout more challenging. So typically you need a gym, something like that. One other workout that is common, um, and oftentimes you guys don't necessarily understand this acronym, but it's LIS or HISS. And what that means is it's low intensity or high intensity steady state cardio. So Angela is doing it right now. Eric's doing it right now. Um, I was seeing, oh, Martin is doing it right now. Any of you guys walking? Uh, Kathy was earlier. That's all examples of low intensity, steady state cardio. It's something that elevates your heart rate and it's a steady state. It's going to elevate it and it's going to stay this, about the same the whole time, right? Walker, I'm doing um, something a little different. What's up? I'm doing something a little different. I'm walking with a band around my waist. Oh, dang. At an incline, the highest incline at five miles an hour. <laughs> All right. So his may not be low intensity. It's a little more high intensity. I bet his heart rate's up there. You can tell by the way he's talking. But either way, right? Um, these are another example. These are, this is typically what you think of with like regular cardio, right? How often do you say like, oh, I'm going to go do some cardio and we go run, we go jump on a bike, we go row, something like that. Um, they're typically longer, right? Like, Eric might be there for 45, 60 minutes walking. Depends on how many steps he's trying to hit. Probably this whole this whole call, right? Typically with this stuff, you're going to get a, a, a high caloric burn, right? And it's not going to cause a lot of fatigue. Like Angelo is not going to step off the treadmill here in a second and just be totally wiped, right? Like he can't do anything the rest of the day. But I can guarantee you he probably just knocked out 300 plus calories, you know, just with all his walking. Um, we'll see here towards the end. Um, so there's, there's a lot of calories that can be burned and it's an easy way to not fatigue yourself and be completely exhausted, um, and still really excel your weight loss. Um, however, 
it's typically not conducive of building muscle per se, unless you went from a position where like you had surgery and couldn't even walk, right? Otherwise, walking isn't necessarily going to build muscle mass on your legs, um, unlike a squat or something would. But something about this list that you guys might not know, I, I think I just mentioned it to Kathy a little while ago, and I, I've mentioned it before, but um, this low intensity cardio that we talk about, uh, it's actually really good for like mobilizing fat and breaking down fat. And the reason that is, is when your heart rate is elevated, but it can stay below 120, 130 uh, beats per minute. Um, all it does is accelerate the, the rate at which your body can break down fat. Um, where when your heart rate gets really high, like when you're sprinting or something like that, you're going to burn more calories in a shorter amount of time, but uh, it's going to be breaking down carbohydrates mostly because that's how your body stores energy. Um, so there's a lot of a lot of benefits to that. It's going to keep you at an elevated heart rate for longer. Again, some of those examples are running, walking, cycling, um, what you typically think of when you go to the gym to just go do some cardio or a recovery day, right? Um, with that being said, before we jump into recovery, when we talk about workouts, what, what are some of the workouts? What do you guys prefer? I, I think, uh, Eric, did you intentionally just raise your hand? Go ahead and speak, man. Yeah, I have a question since uh, about low intensity. Um, yeah. I just remember like back in the day, it used to be like um, – you used to have to go as at 20 minutes uh, before, uh, you, you know, it was supposed to, after 20 minutes, it was supposed to switch between burning our carbs and burning fat. Is that true? Or is that just kind of a. Yeah. yeah. It, it, I mean, in the grand scheme of things, it won't make a large difference in the way that you lose weight, but it does help again, target what's primarily being burned as fuel. And that kind of comes down to body type and everything else. I mean, if you have, more fat to store and your body stores fat differently. If there's more stored, it's going to break that down for longer. Um, but a lot of it comes down to where your heart rate is at. So if you can, if you can maintain it at a lower heart rate, you're going to burn a lot more of, of that fat that we're talking about as, as a fuel source. Roger. Thanks. Yeah. All right. So, so what's uh, your guys' favorite workouts? And if it's not something here, if it's not hit strength training or, uh, uh, this list or hiss, this cardio, what is it? What do you guys, what do you guys like prefer to do? Who in was here, let me, let me ask this actually, who in here prefers strength training? All right. I got lay. All right. Maurice, I was going to say you better raise your hand, man. Oh, and oh, <laughs> so, Hey, Gosh, hey Walker, what's up? Uh, it's Andy. Yeah. Strength training too. I don't know how to raise my hand in this. Oh, you're so. good. Yeah, you're good. Andy, what have you been thinking of? So Andy recently went from doing a lot of dumbbell strength training to barbell. What are your thoughts on it so far? You've been like three, what, three and a half weeks into some barbell yeah, strength more training? Yeah, um, it's, it's been pretty good, actually. Um, you know, actually, back in the day, I used to do a lot more like just bench press with barbells and stuff. I, and actually, I think with you, I've done the most dumbbells I've ever been. So I'm kind of going back to what it was like maybe 10, 15 years ago. So no, I really like it. And the balancing is better too. I think, um, you know, I'm, I feel like I'm much stronger than I used to be. So yeah. um, even 10 years ago, so it's been great. Yeah, and no. Andy's down, just so you guys don't know. Uh, I don't know if Matt posted his pictures or anything yet, but Andy's down, what, 20, 20 some pounds? Pretty, pretty uh, much, yeah. Like yeah, 19, in like 20 16 pounds. weeks. Yeah, yeah. so he's, uh, he's had a lot of success. But anyways, all right, who's uh who who prefers cardio in here? Like I'm gonna say like uh running or anything like that nature. <laughs> Angela, I, I know. No. <laughs> no. Yeah. Thought I wish I liked running as yeah. I, Kyle, I, I, you what do you prefer? Yeah. Um, I like to get my head straight. Like when I'm trying to get my zen, it's running. Like when I like get into myself and like chill and just zen out, it's it's running. All right, all right. Good to know. Well, yeah. Uh, obviously, I mean, you guys got to find what what fits for you, and it sometimes it might be a balance of both. Like it's not, it doesn't have to be one or the other. Um, a lot of you guys and a lot of people I work with, they're doing multiple things. They're doing some running. They're doing some lifting. They're uh, it's, it's all about finding what's going to work best for you and what's going to balance and, and ultimately get you to your goal and, and make working out not seem like a chore. So um, one kind of last topic I want to touch on, because I feel like this kind of rounds everything out is recovery. Um, and this, 
recovery is more than just the, you know, 30 minutes to an hour after the gym. Obviously, that's a large part in it. Um, and, and one thing you should certainly be doing as part of your recovery, especially if you're struggling with soreness and stuff, is some soft tissue work, which is like foam rolling, right? Using a, a lacrosse ball, like Eric was talking about, on sore muscles under your feet. Um, that's, the, that's where your static stretching can come more into play, right? Where you're going to sit there, you're going to hold a position that's stretching your quad or your hamstrings afterwards. Obviously, all the soft tissue work is something that can be done essentially right after your workout, but then can be used as a tool to continue to help where you're most sore. Um, nutrition plays a large part. Um, I'll, I'll be brief on this. And if you guys have more questions afterwards, um, when we kind of finish this up and have that Q&A ask, but typically following a workout, we always hear protein like needs to be consumed. There's some truth to that, but really it's not that like 30 minute window that is commonly said like, oh, you need to slam a protein shake after your workout or it doesn't, it's not going to be effective. There's a lot of, uh, I, I guess, misnomers on that. And that's not necessarily true. There's a lot of studies that show even if you can um, eat, it doesn't even necessarily be, need to be a super high protein meal, but eat something with some carbs and some protein within a couple hours after your workout. It's not going to, um, you're not going to lose a lot of the gains that you just had or a lot of the muscle breakdown that you just had. You'll recover just fine. So a little bit of carbs, a little bit of protein. Um, I talked about this a while back as well. Oh, shoot. Can I go back? There we go. Is nasal breathing. Uh, and we talked about vasodilators. I think we, we got on a big topic about beet juice and how it naturally um, causes your veins to open up and carry more oxygen rich blood. Um, nasal breathing actually does that same thing. So when you breathe through your nose, as opposed to your mouth, um, it is filtered and it's a vasodilator. So it causes, again, it's, it filters nitric oxide when it comes to your nose and that nitric oxide opens up your veins. And when you open up your veins, more blood is going to be delivered through your muscles um, and everything else. So it's going to help you recover more. So something to be mindful of when you're cooling down from a run, things like that is being intentional about trying to redirect your um, breathing in through your nose. Um, and then it doesn't necessarily have to come out of your nose, but in through your nose is the big key there. Cause when you breathe in through your mouth, that nitric oxide isn't filtered. Oh, I got some hands raised. Somebody have a question. Oh, okay. All right. Never mind. Uh, then I, water intake, that's huge. Um, and if you guys aren't mindful of how much water you drink, I would challenge you to just even keep track of it for a couple of days. Um, good rule of thumb is half your body weight in ounces, but then that's without a workout. Then you start adding in workouts and, um, for every workout, you know, it's about 16 ounces or for every hour working out at least 16 ounces of water. That's just a very general rule of thumb. But when you're looking at how much water you should be consuming and where you're at, and if you're struggling, then, uh, then be mindful of that. I see lay taking a drink of water right now. So I must have reminded her. Uh, and then the biggest one I think, and it's what's slept on most, especially with athletes and everything is sleep. And we, we've had lots of conversations on sleep, but sleep plays a large role in the way that you recover. I mean, that's where all of your healing is happening. That's where your muscles are recovering. All that scar tissue is healing and things like that. All of that happens when you sleep. So a lot of your strength gains and your progress in your fat loss can be affected by not sleeping well. It stresses your body out. Um, and it's not that you need to sleep for eight, 10 hours to be effective sleep, but um, you need to find what fits and where you feel your best with your sleep, with your sleep schedule. Um, and if you're struggling with sleep, again, talk to your coaches. Um, this is something that's a little off topic, but I've shared it with a couple people. Willie's in here. I don't know if he's still in here. I saw he was earlier. Willie, are you in here still? I'll give him a second, see if he is. Oh, well, I guess I see his name. Either way. I'm still here. Okay. So um, this McGill Big Three, I, I brought it up with a few people. Um, there was actually a big study done on it. And essentially what they did is it's for people with lower back pain. Um, and they consider it a warm up, but they basically tell you, you know, to do it every time, uh, every day or at the bare minimum every time before you work out. And um, I have this saved on my phone because I've sent it to quite a few people, but 
this McGill Big Three. It's three exercises that you're doing, and what they what they do, uh, you can obviously see it on the right hand of the screen here, um, is they force you to control your breathing and work a lot of your stability muscles. So the stabilizer muscles that kind of surround your spine and engage your core, but also engage like your glutes. So your butt and your lower back um, and kind of get it to work synonymously. Um, and there's a lot of studies that they did. Uh, it was on a really large group. It was like, honestly, like 1500 people or something where they had half of them doing this. They all claimed they had lower back pain. They had half of them doing this, uh, this set of exercises um, before their workouts and then the other half not and I mean take it as you will but like 90% of those people uh, experienced less back pain as opposed to your your opposite group it was like 15% right and that was probably just through working out but um, Rob I, he he's not in here he's someone that uh, he had a bulging disc I asked him if I could talk about this but he had a, a bulging disc um, and his back was starting to give him a lot of pain um, and this was something that we started implementing uh, pretty much every day, and he still does it. Um, and his back pain, I mean, is significantly reduced. Uh, I mean, he's over here like swinging a baseball bat 100 times a night because uh, he still plays um, and stuff like that. So if if that is something that you struggle with, I would just I just threw this in here because it's something that I would add into your warm up. It doesn't take very long, um, but basically you you know you hold whatever exercise it is for about 10 seconds. Willie's done it a little bit. Willie, when you had, I don't know if you've still been doing it, but I know Willie uh, would do it every time his back started to hurt, do it for like a week or two. And then I think he'd stop uh, when his back would feel better. And then sure enough, he'd be hitting me up saying his back was hurting. And I'd be asking him if he was doing this. And he's like, oh, no, I was feeling better after that, though. I better start again. So just something to, to try. What would you say, Willie? Yeah, I've kind of I've went back doing it at least twice a week. And it's helped out a lot. Like, I, my job pretty much is pretty physical. I'm lifting big light fixtures, hanging them on a conveyor line and stuff like that. So, doing a lot of bending and lifting. And over time, my back gave me problems. And that McGill 3 really works. I like it. Yeah. So, if you, if you struggle with that, uh, when we're done, I can send stuff. I can have Matt share it with, like, the group chat or anything like that. But, um. I do it. I do it myself, especially I have uh, two stress fractures in my L5 that have been there since like eighth grade. So I do this anytime. I don't do it all the time, but I do do it anytime that my back starts to um, be a little messy, I guess you'd say, uh, and it gets significantly better. So um, with that being said, two slides left. First is book of the month. Um, I will say, obviously, you can tell in the title, this book is a little vulgar. So I will put that out there that if that is not your cup of tea, I would maybe suggest a different book. Um, but Mark Manson wrote this book um, and it talks a lot about um, just getting out of your own way and how oftentimes we choose, we don't realize what that we're choosing to care about things that we shouldn't necessarily um, and how that affects our time, how it affects our, our mental game and our mental attitude and things. So it's essentially, uh, it's a self, it's a self-help book or self help book. Um, if, uh, if you're motivated by some of those things, I would certainly encourage reading it. It's really easy. It was like 160 pages. Uh, again, you just got to either get past the cuss words um, or embrace it. Um, but his big, like one of his kind of bigger questions is, you know, we all have problems, but it's how do you respond to those problems? Um, and so if you're interested, look it up, give it a read. I, I really enjoyed the book. Um, I read it three or four months ago. So um, and last thing, special shout out to client of the month. Um, he's normally on here. Uh, he, they just started back up uh, choir, but John Heineman, I think Matt had just posted his progress picks a little while ago, but um, he actually, he's down 40 pounds. Um, so 240 to 200. Um, and that was his ultimate goal was 200. We actually hit it last week. Um, in the midst of that, I mean, he took a three week vacation completely off the grid in Minnesota where I didn't even get to talk to him. Um, and he came back and was only up one pound. And as soon as he got back, uh, it was a little, little mental shift for about a week, but, um, he was resilient, kind of got back into it and knocked off the last six pounds and probably the last three weeks. Um, just a super, super persistent in everything he's done. 
Um, so special shout out to him. And I think Matt will uh, give him a little gift card at some point. So um, that's, that is uh, everything I have for this evening. Um, now is the point where I know it's almost seven. So I talked for a little while, but uh, we can open it up and see what questions you guys have, whether it is regarding workouts. If you need to leave, um, you are free to go. But if you uh, want to stick around, it's usually where we have a little Q&A, um, see what questions you guys have regarding either what we just talked about, something that you're doing currently, uh, any questions that you have with the program, anything there. So thanks, Kathy. <clears throat> any questions on workouts? Nothing. How many calories do people walk in? How many have y'all burned so far? Uh, 473 for me. Dang. I got almost almost three miles in. I got 331. Awesome, yeah, I see it. Nice. What are you at, Martin? 332 now. 332. All right. Yeah. Nice. Dang, I really need to get a treadmill. I'm telling you guys, that's that's one thing I'm missing out on most. Doing work. I could be doing spreadsheets on the treadmill. I'm at a thousand and twelve. Holy what, smokes. What's your incline at? All the way up. And I'm walking at five miles an hour. And then I'm jogging in between it nice. at six miles an hour, which I'm about to go back up to in about 30 seconds. I don't even know That's how you so. walk at five miles an hour, man. I try and walk <laughs> at four and I'm like Bambi legs. Like I can't keep up. <laughs> Got 40 inch legs. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I got 40 years legs. That's how I'm 6'5". So I just dry it out. Yeah. I did have a question for you. Um, yeah, what's up? So as far as like, and this was more specific to me. So I was like, eh, I don't want to, uh, I don't, I don't know if anybody else in here is like really going after the whole bodybuilding thing. But uh, I figured I'd ask since Matt's in here, we got a couple other the guys. Yeah. Maybe the consecutive that? knowledge might help. But uh, as far as like, so eventually when we get to the point where I'm like actually prepping for a show would a night, like I've seen a, a couple and it's kind of, I don't want to say newer. I don't know exactly how long it's been around, but it couldn't, couldn't be that long. Um, but you mentioned the like breathing through your nose as a vasodilator because it uh, helps your body, like encourage it to produce uh, nitric oxide, stuff yeah. like that. Um, is a, a nitric oxide, even for recovery, like supplement, or it, I mean, it's not like actual ingesting of nitric oxide, but it helps your body, you know, so it preaches to uh, produce more or encourages it to, I don't know exactly. Yeah. So I, I don't know if you intentionally muted yourself there, but um, like with, uh, you're talking like they have the vasodilators, like the nitric oxide, like pills that you can ingest too um, yes, as a supplement, sorry. right? <laughs> yeah they, <laughs> but this, if that would be like you know because especially like these past couple like on my cut dude like those two and a half hour lifts were a grind and the recovery was awful and we're yeah. down like whatever amount of calories and i'm freaking we you know we're peaking and it was just awful yeah. i'm like if that was re with recovery or if it's not something yeah. mess i don't know right it typically will it's it's more for your intra workout recovery so your workout during uh, or your recovery during and shortly after just because that's obviously the most ample time where your muscles are trying to recover um it's more of that instant recovery because they've been depleted of that oxygen and all the nutrients um so when your muscles are in that really depleted state and while they're getting depleted that nitric oxide can be beneficial um but I, from what I've seen, there's not a lot of added benefit in taking it outside of, you know, near workout times or the end of your workout. Mm. Rich, you can do, Rich, you can do beast, beat extract before you lift. What was that? Within, oh, yeah. Beat extract, and then after you've done about 30, within 30 minutes, do magnesium for yeah. recovery. Yep. Yeah, magnesium slept on too. Like everybody, I mean, oftentimes with like fatigue and muscles, can always look at like potassium but uh, if you really struggle with like muscle fatigue yeah ma i have, didn't even think about that but magnesium is a big one that can help a lot or cramps at night martin i got martin doing magnesium at night yep. and he stopped getting cramps at night and he's recovering faster yeah yeah i'm, I'm like thinking too like for for next cut for sure like yeah 
that la- that last one i mean it was it was a feel feel the situation out right like there wasn't yeah. stress we are actually prepping for a show but when it comes to that time like i want to have that i want to have that figured out because man that sucked yeah. <laughs> Reese, that Reese, are you doing there. physique or are you doing classic bodybuilding uh physique that, that's the goal i'm not because i'm not what i thought when i saw your when i saw your progress pics i thought you was doing uh, uh physique and how tall are you you're muted unmute oh, yourself shoot i keep double tapping it or something yeah physique. How tall are you? Uh, i'm six you're sick oh you're gonna you're gonna take over the show bro when you tall and you do physique you're smile make sure you look at all the damn judges and try to look like everybody in the crowd you're gonna take it because you're gonna have a bigger stage presence you got this shit in the bag plus you got walker so you good Heck yeah have you seen listen when he when he started he sent me some like of his progress pics and i was like damn it dude because he's like i'm like you would crush bodybuilding like his he has everything so down, like especially natural, like he, that's insane. But he's like, nah, I think I'm leaning towards powerlifting. I was like, <laughs> but he's crushing that yeah, too. The, yeah. the transition Maybe. for Walker would be crazy. He just had to get his waist smaller. That's it. Yeah. So he's not boxing and be V shaped. Yeah. <laughs> that carb cycling at the uh, when you at the end of your your training for to get on stage is what sucks the most. You're gonna be yeah. moody. Yeah, you're, you're gonna be it's sleepy like cutting away for wrestling. Sleep. It's like yep, cutting away for wrestling all over again. I'm pissed off all boxing. the time. Well, Jenna we gotta cut away for boxing. That shit sucks. Yeah. Jenna, Jenna used to get so mad at me. Like when uh even this I wrestled in that old timer, old timers, I guess. Uh event, what was that, like three, four months ago, like March or April. And you're sick, dude. Yeah, when I when I did that, Jenna was like, I, I was I was cutting down for that, and I went from like oh like almost two hundred to one eighty five when I wrestled in that. And granted, I did it over time, but uh, the last like the day before I had to wrestle, I still weighed like one eighty eight, and I had to weigh one eighty five, so I had to lose those last like three or four quick. And I was so grouchy, like I forgot how much I hated you know having to lose like the rapid weight loss stuff that you you see with like wrestlers and stuff like that it wasn't fun i don't encourage it for me it was the the no water the day before and 600 grams of carbs oh when you're trying to peak for like looking yeah having that full look waking up in the morning and (laughs) going and hitting that dude i was i was chewing on ice cubes bro (laughs) to go through my uh, because my 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 mouth had no water in it Mm-hmm. And so I was choking and like hey. coughing, breathing yeah. the, yeah, it was awful. Yeah. I got to get used to it though. Yeah. No, I you tried to I, steal water. Have you tried yeah. to steal water, Reese? You said what? You stealed water. Distilled. Um, in it. You won't hold any water weight. You'll, you're, uh, you'll uh, satisfy your water craving, but you won't hold any water weight because it has nothing in it. It's completely boiled out. See, man. You're... Yeah, that would have been... Yeah, but I, I still probably need to do the, the cutting it out the day before just for, like, maximize the dry, that. Be... To look dry, yeah. Get you some salt tablets, too. So when you when you just pride yourself of that water the day before the night before or the morning of it depends on what your coach tells you to do you have salt and it makes you more veiny yep yeah that's, like also, why, that's also why we carb loaded uh sorry for you guys that have n- no interest in what we're talking about if i'm sorry if that's the case uh but that's also why we we carb loaded uh like so reese 600 went from, we reese went from like 80 grams of carbs a day when at the end of his cut to when he wanted to peak for for his photos and uh 600 grams of carbs you should have seen the look on the galley lady's face when i asked for 12 scoops of rice <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> and, and I have no water in my mouth bro so i'm like every like three scoops of rice i get through i'm taking like a swig and letting it sit there Oh, bro. Yeah. Are you feel, soon? To, for those of you that are would, holding on to our, our three-person conversation right here, what we're talking about is we treated Reese's, the end of his cut, like a bodybuilding competition, like a physique composition, which is where 
if you've ever watched if you've ever seen any competitors like that they talk about trying to get really dry is what you call it and it's where you basically take all the water that's stored under your skin um and you're trying to rid that water so you're you're basically the only water in your body is like what's being stored intracellularly you know like in your muscles and stuff and so you're trying to rid all that subcutaneous water that's under your skin that makes you feel a little fluffier like when you feel bloated it's usually because you got a lot of water there um and so you're trying to rid all of that um and then so he was drinking practically zero water the day before this the this competition and then chewing you, ice yeah you you carb load because that's what helps pull any water that you do have into the muscle and makes it look more swollen so that's how you get this like that peak physique that they're trying to achieve when they step out on stage but that's also why like you hear bodybuilders like pass out on stage and some of that stuff because they that's the kind of stuff that happens so this is not stuff that we encourage to anybody unless you are talking wanting to like go compete for some physique or some bodybuilding something like that so but not i guess before before reese jumps more into that for those of you that are still in here because we can talk about this all day do you guys have anything yeah that i got it you're wanting to yeah ask any or are you guys just hanging on because it's kind of a funny conversation that we're over here having i see linda laughing so all right, good. Well, if you guys don't have questions, then yeah, you can hold tight. And I guess me and Reese can always talk about this more later too. But yeah, we got to schedule that phone call. Yeah, or we do. Call. We'll set up another Zoom here because yeah, we're getting close to you being kind of at the the top end of your weight, anyways, like two hundred ish. So, dude, I think I want to go. Hey, I've been car car loading my whole life. Hey, see, you're ready to go <laughs> step on stage, Greg. <laughs> Let's get no, it. I need, to, I need to cut. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Oh, that's great. Did Matt jump off? Yeah, he said he had to he had to get out of here. So he said good night. So I have okay, a question, cool. Walker. What's up, Blay? So What's up, bud? I have an issue as far as like my like my intake, like you know, trying to get a proper like um I guess my calorie count to where I'm, I need to match it because I, I I'm struggling. And you're struggling getting a knock, about, right? Right. And I'm crashing. But the one thing I can't stop is working out. So I that's the only thing I have consistent. But the problem is I'm drained. Like I'm I'm napping twice a day because I'm I'm depleted. Yeah, your body's right. underfed. Yeah. Right. And then I'm I'm trying to eat, but I can't. And so I like I, I go through the list that you had from the original workout plan so uh -huh. i'll go based off of that pull, not to pull the um fast but what would be a quick go-to if i was to pick this up and put it in my arsenal of like my go-to that i can what would be a recommendation that i can just grab and go because you know I, i'll do nuts i have those but yep. then i'm one of those type of people that i cannot do leftovers after two days yeah i knew so that if you're yeah, at, yeah. remember in the beginning Walker. Because I told you, you that, I was like, I don't do meal prep. I'm sorry, go ahead. As Walker sent you a picture that uh, me and Matt have, I'm sure Walker has it too. That yeah, shows I, I forgot that all about that. Your, yeah, send that to her. It, it will has you, ideas will you of foods you can to eat. Me, Eric? Yeah, and then uh, I got a good one for you. And this goes for everybody. I've suggested this one to some of my clients. It's light, but it's protein heavy, and it's good fats. So you get you a can of albacore tuna, a half of avocado, a cup of cottage cheese, and black pepper. It's high in everything but carbs. Last me the cheese, but I do you repeat that. A can of albacore tuna, a yeah, cup of cottage doing cheese. No cottage a half of, of an avocado and chop it all up, mix it up in the same bowl and put black pepper on it. The black, Lay, so all three my, of them what, what I would sodium. add, oh, sorry. What I would add to what Eric just said. So something I, I, you know, without even thinking about that, that's something I do pretty regularly, but I will add, um, I don't know if you've ever heard of it. Primal kitchen. They make a, they make a bunch of like yes. dressings and stuff like that. They have a Buffalo sauce that they make out of avocado oil. So it's a little higher in fat. So it's packed with calories if you if that's where you're struggling is like i need more calories then add uh adding something like that that is uh um that's an avocado oil base but it's a buffalo sauce so you'd be doing like okay. avocado buffalo sauce and tuna instead 
that's but, a good one for when you want to when you want to fill your carbs after a workout. It's gonna sound very unorthodox, but it works. It's pop tarts. Oh, I was gonna say right. like gummy bears or something. <laughs> yep, pop tarts. I, I like the sound of that. Any kind of pop tarts or it it don't fucking matter. Hair. Whatever kind of pop tarts. They're all you want. they're all loaded. Yeah. So that's what I was gonna uh, say, Leg. Is another one too. Yeah. Before before okay. Eric before Eric talked about like the the tuna and the avocado and stuff is what I would challenge or ask you to do is think about what is actually appetizing to you. Because for you, it's not that you have to worry about yes. overeating. Like you're under eating right now. And that's why you feel, <laughs> I see Jimmy all said he loves a good pop tart. Um, it's not that you have to worry about overeating right now. When we get to that point, we were, we were at that point at one time, but where you're right. under eating, you don't necessarily need to worry about what it's coming from. Um, we just need to get calories in your body because it's depleting your metabolism and yeah, your brain. So I would say I would challenge you and, and honestly thinking like, what is most appetizing to you? Is it, I know you don't do dairy real well, but I was going to say like, is it ice cream? Is it, you know, is it a pop tart? Is it like, would it be if you grabbed some sour gummy worms after your workout and ate those with your protein shake? Like, doing something simple like that, that you can one take with you and is going to be super appetizing where you don't feel full off of it. Or like, Oh God, I'm so full. I don't want to eat anymore. Like if you can throw down a pack of sour gummy worms or whatever it is, that's going to be, you know, a quick 300 calories or whatever. And, and as long as you're timing with your workout, most of that's going to be actually used effectively and not just stored in a bad way, you know, but you just need calories in general. So storing it in a bad way. Yeah. Uh, oh wait, did you, did you go there? Uh, did you say, what do you, what do I mean? Storing it in a bad way? No, no, no. As in, oh. no, I think I've been storing it in a bad way. Yeah, exactly. Like, like I will work out at nine something. And then by the time I'm eating, it's like two, cause I, you know, I'm, I'm in the gym for two hours. Yeah. That's what I mean. So, so I'm, hitting, hitting that little window of that, like two, you know, within like that couple hours of working out with just some simple sugar and a little bit of protein okay. will go a long way. And that's kind of what I was talking about when I said carbs and protein, but real quick, Edgar, do you have a question? Yeah. So, um, so like I, now that I've been tracking the calories and stuff, I have that same issue with the under calories. Of yep. the, my, yeah. Now what I've noticed though, is that like, um, the sugars and you know that that would be high does that matter because like everything is low protein carbs everything is low calories are low but like i'm noticing sodium is high uh sugar's yeah. high so and it's like i'm like okay well if i add more <laughs> yeah am i gonna you know i don't want to get diabetic <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. so let like me that. let me put this in like the sim simplest terms First with sodium is sodium gets a bad rep. If you're not doing anything to make yourself sweat, that's where sodium becomes a problem. But if you're doing anything that causes your body to sweat naturally and excrete, um, it's going to rid excess salt. So that's why salt is sweaty. Like you need salt anyways, because it's a big part of your, the cellular balance of water in your cells. So like salt and potassium are stored in your cell. Um, if you get really low in salt, you can still cramp, even if like your potassium is higher, things like that. So don't, oh, don't worry too much about what it's saying regarding like your salt and stuff. As long as we're doing workouts that make you sweat and stuff like that. And you're drinking plenty of water. Um, that's why electrolytes have sodium and salt in them. Yep. That's exactly, that's exactly why. why. Like when, when, when you're cramping and they'll be like, oh, you need electrolytes. It's mostly for the salt. That's what stops the instant cramping. Um, and then in regards to uh, the like sugar and all that stuff, obviously, as we bring your calories up, we want everything to come up. We want your protein to come up. We want all of that in a perfect world. In a perfect world, you crush tons and tons of protein, which you and I are about to have our call this week on. Um, you crush cr tons and tons of protein and uh, you have a, a pretty good balance of carbs and fats. But when you are coming from a state of like, I, you regularly under eat. The most important thing is not how much protein or anything or any of those macros, your sugar, anything like that. It's actually just sheer calories. Um, and that's simply because when you're super, super low in calories, your metabolism slows down. Um, it stresses your body out. 
So even if those calories aren't necessarily where we want them to come from, like sugar or something like that, the calories are more important than the macros. And we can always do whatever we need to, to get your calories higher. And then as you get used to eating those higher calories, then we can start to manipulate and get your macros where they should be. We can start cleaning up what you're eating. Um, but the biggest thing first is the numbers. Walker, I'm glad you said stress because that's where your cortisol is going to get challenged at too. Yeah. Is when you uh, carb cycle, when you calorie cycle. Yeah. Uh, for those of you that can stomach it, one of the best things to have when you got cramps or you need to recover so you don't cramp is pickle juice. Yep. If, if you drink a, a shot, a shot glass or two or three of pickle juice, I'll do respect now. Everything. <laughs> I used to have to, we used to carry it when we uh when I played basketball. I played basketball for 20 years. When we had AAU tournaments, sometimes you have five, six games in a day. So yep, we used to drink pickle jar. juice and then chug a chug a chug a Gatorade or some water right after it. Yep. Me personally, I like I like pickle juice, so it don't bother me. Yeah. But you won't cramp. I promise you that. I saw Willie yeah, said I Rice Krispies in there too, by the way. He was not talking yep. electrolytes, he was talking those carbs, but hey, when do you when are you most hungry? Lay. Lay, when are you most hungry? So here's the thing. I'm rarely hungry. I have to force myself to eat three times a day. Let me say and this. I'm still, always, so, uh, my line of work, I'm always busy and moving. Oh, so when you're working, you're not thinking about eating. Nope. Do you, um, Lay, do you force first. yourself to eat in the morning? Since or do you, you normally skip yes. it? Because remember, I wasn't. Yeah, I've always skipped it. Until I started the program with you, I've always skipped it. I was going to say, because sometimes that will happen so. too, is oftentimes, how many times do you hear people say like, oh, if I eat breakfast, I'm hungry all day. And that's mostly because of what it does to spur your metabolism. Um, and, mm -hmm. and so that's what I was going to make sure you're still doing too. It's like forcing yourself to eat a little bit for breakfast, but... And Breakfast is exactly what you say when yeah. you break the word down. It's a break fast. Yep. You break it fast. Mm -hmm. You can skip breakfast. I, yeah. I, I eat breakfast maybe twice a week, but I eat a big lunch and a big dinner. Yeah. And I snack three mm -hmm. times. Yep. So. Yeah. Yeah, you're usually yeah. not hungry so I, until, I've, I've you know, gotten better. I've gotten better. Yeah. I was going to say, usually you're not actually, like, you know, you might think you're a little bit hungry when you wake up and feel that way, but if you wait a little bit, now this is more to everybody else, not necessarily lay, but I will say when you typically wake up, like if you wait just a little bit, your hunger goes away and that like your hunger doesn't usually come until you break your fast. Like your body will, will use the fuel sources that it has available. And then, and then when you finally break your fast with food, that's when it's like, Oh, okay. It's time to eat. I'm hungry. So or see you, Jamil. Yeah. But I, I mean, I'm going to have to jump off here too soon, but. I'll um, see y'all later. I got to go sit in this sauna for 30 minutes. Yeah. But, Lay, if you got more questions, box for me. I'll be on my phone right now. I just got to head outside and do some housework. So, <laughs> yeah, go do the hugs and duties. Yeah. All Have right. I'll see you guys later. Willie, see ya. Kyle, see ya. Edgar, Robert, Greg, see you guys. See you, Linda. Bye, guys.